Jackie, Benny Wise, Dracula, Jack Torrance, The Babadook, Annabelle. A lot of classic horror characters, whether they are monsters or villains, all have their own names to call, to understand, to know, to fear. These names also lead to deep origins and specific stories of each character. So one of the ways you can create a new direction for the horror genre is to create an undetermined reality without a name, without a story, without a clear personality and without a specific motive. That's what It Follows did when all we know about the scary villains in this film is just a little bit. The director of the Australian comedy, David Robert Mitchell, once said that the idea of the film came from the repeated nightmares of his childhood with the image of a monster without a defined form continuously following him slowly. It Follows begins with a story that you feel quite similar to a comic book game that used to be very popular. Almost everyone has heard of it. They have received a letter with a scary message saying that you have to fold it and send it to other people. Otherwise, you will have to suffer. For the beautiful young girl, this game was found in a more terrible version, more terrifying than many times. After dating and dating Hugh, Jay was told by him that she had been followed by him, a wish that he received from someone on the love path. It's very slow, but it's not stupid. It will get closer and closer. That's what Hugh tried to explain to Jay after she saw him in the form of a pregnant woman and said that the only way to escape was to pass on to another person through sexual intercourse. If Jay dies, Lingwen will return to the previous person as Hugh and will continue forever until he returns to the first person. This way of thinking probably also makes you think of some other quite classic horror movies. Like in The Ring, when you watch a ghostly video, you will immediately receive a call notification that you have seven days. At the end of this time, Samara will escape from the world on her TV and kill you. You can only pass on Lingwen by copying a version of that DVD and showing it to others. Others will continue to maintain this to pass on Lingwen. And that's also a way to pass on the horror that IT brings, continuously pass it on. What's scary about IT is that it doesn't have a defined form. It could be anyone you meet on the street, in school, or at a convenience store on the street. It could be a stranger. It could be a girl you just passed by. It could also be... Become your best friend, with your eyes wide open, your smile slowly, and your silence following you. Itch moves very slowly, so at that moment you can try to escape from it. However, that is why you are unintentionally dragging out the time you are being chased, and you are pushing yourself deeper and deeper into fear when you can never know what you are facing. That is why Itch does not make you feel guilty by attacking violently or in a horrible way. It makes you jealous when every second, every minute, every moment, Itch can appear and stalk you. Therefore, the horror of the work is not in jump scares or bloody scenes, but in a gloomy, exhilarating, tense atmosphere. In some way, Itch symbolizes the invisible fears in life, but the horrific shadows will come one day, and we can never know. There are many ways to develop a story with an idea, but the good thing about it follows is that it is a form of transmission of inspiration through sexual intercourse. A form that is both exciting and has many symbolic meanings that can be flexibly changed according to the experience and perspective of each viewer. In fact, society is developing more and more people's thoughts about sexual intercourse are also changing. Before, we always thought that sexual intercourse was always accompanied by love. And you should only have a close relationship with someone you really have a close relationship with. Especially with Asian countries like Vietnam, the issue of sexual intercourse a few years ago was seen as a hot topic. But now, it has gradually become a natural, normal, to the point of being a strange story. The film may not entirely want to judge that story, but just set a reasonable limit for the experience. Because obviously, when you are too free and not in the frame, you will very easily encounter problems or consequences that you cannot solve. Many people think that It Follows is like a symbol for diseases spreading through unsafe sexual intercourse, and call it love. STDs are infectious diseases that can be transmitted through sexual intercourse. STDs can affect anyone with sexual intercourse, both men and women. Most sick people don't know they're sick and can be transmitted to others. The way AIDS approaches and kills the victim is very similar to these diseases. It doesn't kill you right away, but it will make you die more and more. It not only attacks you physically, but it will also paralyze you mentally, making you live in fear for a long time. Our main character, Jay, is a 19-year-old girl. 
the time has started to move, start to love, start to have a desire to be close to death. The people around her in the fight against AIDS, our sisters and close friends since childhood, are also at an adult age. From the characters, it is also clear that the messages that the director wants to convey are the thoughts and perspectives of young people on social issues. It seems that the director believes that the problem of young people must be solved by young people themselves. Jay decides not to tell his mother because he doesn't want her to worry. Jay's mother's face and Kelly's face are never revealed when she only takes frames to act when her hair covers her face. This confirms the director's thinking because Jay is starting to enter the age of war and has his own independent thoughts. So why is the angle of view of the film set on a young girl, not a boy? To be honest, women are often the target of sexual assault. The first time Jay appeared, she was in the pool alone, enjoying a very private space, but a small detail. There are two kids in the neighborhood, probably only about 10 to 12 years old, hiding in a nearby bush and peeking at a 19-year-old girl in a bikini. In a very simple way, the director made us see the background of the lives of young women. They are always the subject of violent behaviors, peaking, of meaningless and vulgar sexual behavior, of sexual instinct that sometimes men cannot control. You will also see that Jay's sexual relationships in the film are all in a state of not being too mature, even insecure. For the first time, she and Hugh drive in a car on an empty road, and the audience plays the role of third parties who cannot take their eyes off the innocent faces of young men and women. For the second time, she and Greg get close to each other right on the bed, when Jay's mental and physical state has not yet recovered. We cannot say that Greg's action is heroic, is to save Jay, because this guy clearly does not believe that there is an invisible monster chasing Jay, just because she has sexual relations with another person. Previously, Greg looked at Jay with strange eyes when parking or in class. According to me, he has always wanted to do this, and this is just a chance to make it up to him. In the end, Jay has an experience with Paul at home, after the incident at the pool, and it seems like the two of them don't do this out of emotion. They do it because Paul wants to help. They do it because in the end, Jay is too tired and accepts Paul's companionship. They do it because they know that the attack at the pool cannot completely stop IT's investigation. In this last time, we see Jay as the initiator, not the man in the last two times. It shows a pretty clear change in the way people see the problem, and also raises a controversial message about sexual relations. The director did not mean to say that sexual relations are bad, just that we are aware of it and how to deal with it. I always thought that an impressive horror film would be a horror film with strong enough messages, not just simply a screen that shows ridiculous techniques and makes the audience forget the content as the final frame closes. And clearly, It Follows has done that, when in addition to messages about sexual relations with young people, the film also sets new perspectives on the nature of relationships in life. It can be said that relationships are an important symbol for everyone. However, young people often tend to forget the essential relationships, such as family, friendship, because they think they are always there, so they accidentally forget them, not giving them the attention they deserve. Most of us, when we are young, will tend to follow love. Although love is the most fragile thing, the easiest relationship to leave, it is something that we never dare to be sure of. It follows, brings a sober look. Love and sexual intercourse are both a value exchange. You have what they need, and they have what you want, not just simply emotional stories. Let's go back to one of the important, important scenes. To reveal the message of the work. It is a scene in school, after Jay knows that he has begun to suffer the persecution of an unidentified entity. Jay's teacher is reading the poem, Love Song of J. Andre Brufrock. And obviously, these meaningful poems also have a certain connection to the theme of love and the life of the film. The poem tells of a rich middle-aged man, surrounded by many wise women who can talk to him about culture and art every day. But he has no feelings for anyone because his heart is too fragile and broken. Love Song of J. Andre Brufrock clearly shows the contradiction with the reality of poetry, and steps into poetry is a step into the deep consciousness of man. Brufrock's complex human being has left us with many special impressions because it is the face of a person who is beginning to realize his identity. That is also a big topic that it follows has set out. Who are we in this life? Does our heart have a reality? Love or true love has no meaning when it does not recognize itself. And in the end, what is the nature of the life of love? Also in the first part of the film, when three friends are watching a movie at home, the movie they are watching is Killers from Space a sci-fi movie produced in 1954. 
It tells the story of a scientist being chased and attacked by aliens after a plane crash. The choice of this film in the first part also partially introduces the chasing atmosphere and shock that it follows will bring. In this part, you will see the character Jara reading a book. And finally, when in the hospital, she also reads a large part of this book for Jay and Paul to hear. It is an original novel by the great Russian novelist Fyodor Dostoevsky. The novel is a series of interesting events when placing such a unique individual at the center of conflicts, desires, and passions, along with the great values of that period of society. The part that Jara chose to read is about the comparison between the pain of death and death, the difference between physical pain and mental injury, but once again affirms the controversial issues that it follows set out. Life and death, tolerance and self-sacrifice, love and the nature of the exchange of values in what I still think of as love. I also ask myself, why is it that it is different from the image of anyone you can meet in life? Perhaps because, after all, it's not just an undetermined entity, but it can be everyone. It can be Jay, it can be Paul, it can be me, it can be you, it can be all of us. Young people who may or may not be in the future, young people who at least once wonder about the value of love, of relationships, of fears, will come at any time, at a time that you can never know before. And that's what I want to share in today's video about one of my most impressive works, IT Follows. I wonder if you agree with what I have shared? Do you have any other opinions? Please leave a comment so we can talk and connect with each other. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me in today's video. And now goodbye and see you soon on Facebook. Bye bye. He's looking at me, kid. Look at me. I love you more than I've ever loved anyone.